G'day Hammerheads, welcome to the bench and finally I'm bringing you the proper test of the big Milwaukee, the M18 FHP and for comparison I'm going to throw in the M18 FH. Now, first things first, these guys do have a couple of different names. So here in Down Underland, we've got the M18 FH, which is the 26 millimeter or one inch hammer. In the Americas, that one is called the 2912. The 20 just means bare tool. You got these other ones, which are kits as well. And because that would be too bloody easy, there's also a different model number in Europe, M18 one FH. And also in Europe, there is also a version of that tool with a quick change chuck, the one F. HX. So, any Euros out there watching this, what's the deal? How come you guys use quick change chucks so much? Uh, I find them useless myself, but I'm really keen to know what the deal is up your way. And the bigger guy on the bench, we call that the M18 FHP. In the Americas, that's the 2915. And in Europe, M18 1 FHP. And the big guy on my bench also has about the same specs as this one, the D handle. So, if you're wondering how that one's going to go, Keep an eye on my big one. So they both look quite similar. The big one is a little bit bigger, but not hugely so. Uh, easy way to tell them apart is the small one has the mode switch on the side, whereas on the big guy, it's on the top, like an STS Max drill. They both have the same features. They've both got sprung handle for vibration dampening. They both got three modes, so drill only. Hammer drill, like free moving and hammer only. And they both have the auto stop feature as well, which is like an anti-kickback safety feature. So if you're drilling and it binds up, it'll cut the motor and hopefully protect you from any kicking back it might be doing. And that's obviously a motion sensor based one because you can just do it, you know, in your hand. The big one also has one key if you're into that kind of connectivity. And it has a slightly, well, it's, I guess it's supposed to be vibration dampening handle, but this does not, it just feels loose and sort of crappy. And just looking at this guy, it kind of feels like it is a scaled down SDS Max drill. Firstly, the mode switch is at the top, but also check out this chuck. You've got the tiny little hole in the end. If you take a look at the SDS Plus bit, it's tiny compared to that whole chuck. All right, so let's look at the specs. Oh, I don't have the European name in there. Imagine it says one as well. Price is $475 dues versus 544. Weight, 3.1 kilos versus 4.1 kilos. Or 6.8 pounds versus nine pounds. Capacity, 26 versus 28 millimeters. Look guys, I'm gonna try and do the inch stuff uh, as often as I can. So just keep an eye on the screen if I actually forget to say it. So 26 millimeters is just a curly one above an inch and 28 millimeters is about an inch and an eighth. Impact energy, 2.7 joules versus 4.9 or 1.99 foot pounds versus 3.61. So the impact power, 12,960 versus 22,540. So the big boy, that is some pretty crazy specs there. Firstly, the impact energy. Let's take a look at that. Well, compared to the other 28 millimeter rated hammers, we got 2.8 joules, we got 3.2, we got three. But this thing with that much impact energy, really that should be rated higher. In fact, if we look at this DeWalt, it is more impact, so they reckon, than a 32 millimeter hammer. So it feels like Milwaukee is kind of selling this guy short for whatever reason. Also, the impact per minute is really fast for a hammer that big. So that impact power, that joules per minute, that is basically the highest out of any we've tested. This is probably the next highest, 18, oh, 19,000. Not even this SDS Max from Bosch gets that kind of drilling power. So they reckon, let's see how it goes. Now it gets even more annoying because if we look in Europe, this guy is actually rated to 32 millimeters, which is what I would think given that amount of impact force. The D handle also rated to 32 millimeters. RPM 1330 for the little guy, pretty standard for a one inch hammer and 800 for the big guy, pretty standard for an SDS Max or really big SDS Plus hammer. All right, so let's get drilling. As usual, our first test is 12 by 80 millimeters or about half inch by three and a half inches. Drilling into 32 MPA concrete. Let's see how they go. All 
righty, let's see how she went. There's some red. And holy hell, we've got a new champion. Look at that, the big red boy way ahead of the entire pack, 4.95 seconds. Now this is a new record in this test, easily beating the DeWalt 32mm, the Bosch 32mm as well, way back here. These guys are all 28mm, the freaky little Makita, just ignore that one, 28 28 just just incredible this guy has blown them all out of the water including the ones that are rated bigger at least in australia and the americas and just between us this guy did a little bit of damage uh drilling these holes getting started in a few of them just completely walking around destroying the concrete instead of drilling in it so if you're drilling small holes quickly just be careful of that and the little red very very respectable here Basically, uh, in this particular test, a little bit behind the little DeWalt, but other than that, in front of all the other one inch hammers, so, you know, that's a one inch, that's a one inch, uh, that's a one inch back there. So yeah, very nice. Ahead of the pack, and this is what we've seen in my previous video where I tested all the one inch drills I had. This guy was top one or two in basically every category. All right, so our next drilling test is the max capacity. So 26 mil, so that is just over an inch, and that is what this guy, the small one, is rated to. Now this drill bit series only goes up to 26 millimeters, so uh, unfortunately, the big guy, she's also getting 26 mil, but still a pretty big hole. Let's see how they handle it. All right, so for drilling 26 millimeters, so basically Big Red has beaten all of its competitors except for this giant Bosch here. Now this guy is the only one in the field with a higher impact force, so if it's drilling faster at a very large bit size, then yeah, makes total sense there. But if we move all the way down, we can see that the other Big DeWalt, another Big Bosch, so that's a 28, that's a 32, 28, 28, 28 so she is handily beating every other drill on here that drilled with a 26 millimeter bit so some of these guys are one inch some of them are inch and an eighth but either way big red has beaten them all very easily and little red once again no real surprise there she is basically beating every other one inch hammer on here that's all these ones down the end all drilling with the same size drill bit all right so let's get these motors really working our next test is drilling through pine with a spade bit so 22 millimeters in this case. Usually I use a 25 or like an inch, but the little one, the clutch was letting go drilling that size. So it seems that a 25 is a little big for this guy to realistically drill. So next size down I had was 22. Anyway, let's see how they go. So that was with the six amp hour high output battery. And that test puts a decent load on the motor. So I just wanted to see if the HO batteries actually do anything. So I also did it with a five amp hour normal output battery for that XC in the States, but they don't label them like that here. And the biggest M18 battery I got at the moment, the eight amp hour high output. Let's see how they go. All right, drilling that pine. So we've got uh, two very different groupings here. So little red, obviously a lot faster, around two and a half seconds for those three battery types. Whereas big red, about four seconds. And the little red, she revs a lot faster. So yeah, no big surprises there. You do want a higher RPM for drilling timber with those spade bits. If we look at the batteries, we've got very, very little difference between the batteries for both cases and also the same order for both cases. So we've got the six, then the eight and then the five. So in this task, a HO battery is making bugger all difference. And there's the numbers if you're interested. So if you're looking at ads like this and hoping a forge is gonna change your life, then, you know, I wouldn't get too excited. You probably will not notice a difference with these tools. And the final test is chipping. So get a little chisel like that. 
stick it in, whack that on hammer only mode, and then knock a 50 mil edge for about two inches off a concrete brick. All right, for the chipping test, no huge surprises there. The big boy chips faster, 0.6 seconds average versus 0.99. So the big boy is rated smaller capacity than you'd expect for a hammer this size. So what I reckon has happened is they've come up with, you know, some new tool, they weren't quite sure about it, and they gave it a lower rating than you'd expect, especially for something that hits as hard as this. So why is it only rated 28 millimeters? Well, I think because it, maybe they've come up with some new sort of hammer system inside, they decided to do like a soft launch, they rated it kind of low, um, and then they released the D-handle version, they rated that 32, which I reckon is where it should be, and while rolling it out in Europe, they've gone and just called this a 32 as well. Both of them 32 the same. So anyway, that D-handle one, same as this, but just different shape, longer shape, more comfortable for drilling downwards and stuff. So if we take a look at this parts list, we can see that the smaller one inch guys is basically hammering with a swing bearing or wobble bearing type piston, which is pretty standard for SDS plus hammers. <laughs> and this is actually a service manual. So if you want to see what kind of grease they have inside these, check that out. But the big guy, like I said at the start, feels like an SDS Max. Well, let's take a look in here. So we have a crank driven piston here. So you see that in big SDS Max hammers. And so basically what Milwaukee has managed to do with this hammer is make an SDS Max style hammer mechanism in there. I guess it's smaller and less massive than usual, so they've gotten it to actually hammer as fast as an SDS Plus. So there you go, mechanically very impressive. But then the other impressive thing about this hammer is the price. This is basically a 32 millimeter hammer, inch and a quarter, and they are selling it for 540 odd dollars in Australia. Whereas other hammers that size are usually in the sort of seven, 800 range. <laughs> Don't worry, honey, I get mine on sale. This DeWalt one, rated 32 millimeters, more like 750, $800 versus 550. Rated to 32 millimeters, $1,000 versus 550. Don't worry, honey, I got mine on sale. So not only has Milwaukee done some very clever mechanical stuff to get this to perform really well, they've also managed to charge a really low price for it, which is awesome because here in Australia, Milwaukee tends to be the most expensive of the big four, depending on the tool, of course. So given the price between these two, there is not much more cost to get a whole lot more performance if you want to buy the bigger guy. Obviously it's bigger and heavier and all that, but really this, this guy costs almost 500, this guy is 550, like I don't usually recommend this, but if you're struggling to choose between these two, you may as well get the big one. So in this Gen 2 style hammer, Milwaukee has really managed to absolutely hit it for six. They've made probably the best performing overall one inch on the market, but more exciting for me, this incredible tool right here. So we saw today that she outperforms bigger hammers from DeWalt and Bosch, while costing a lot less too, which for Milwaukee, I am super surprised by because Milwaukee usually cost a packet here. So anyway, Hammerheads, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. You know, subscribers is how the world goes round. And I really could use a little more ad revenue and even some patrons on my Patreon to help pay for all these bloody tools. So anyway, thanks for watching and we will scratch you later.